Okay. Okay, everybody, this is E. Marceau Pertooth, the Sports Inquirer, and we're joined by Alan Drosky, head coach of Georgia Tech Cross Country. Alan, thanks for joining us. First time we have spoken, and I'm glad you're able to spend some time with us. Yes, glad to be here. Awesome. Overall impressions of the season so far, we were just talking 30 seconds ago off camera, about yeah. you're entering the heart of your season right now. How are you and the team just holding up and getting ready for this stretch? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I think the team is doing well. We've had two competitions um, so far. Uh, one that went according to plan, uh, went really well. And last weekend up in Minnesota, uh, we stumbled a little bit. Um, but I think training's going well. I think preparation for the heart of the season coming up and the championship meets coming up, um, I think is going well. I think we learned a lot in our last competition that I think will help us um, going forward, um, kind of found out where we were really at, where we're, where we're um, needing to get a little stronger, et cetera. You mentioned that first meet, that was the Kennesaw State opener on September 3rd. Let's start with the women. They were able to win that competition as a team. Nicole Feagans won the individual events. What about the women's team and how they're shaping up? They may nationals. The last season had the best finish in program history. How's that unit looking uh, led by Nicole? Um, they're looking good. I, I thought the first meet, the Kennesaw State meet, went, you know, like we were hoping it would. It was um, first meet. Uh, we had only been back to school, I think, training for probably two weeks at the time. Obviously, the team is training through the summer um, in preparation for the season. Um, but they're on their own, spread out, you know, wherever they live or doing internships. So we'd only been back for two weeks at that point, training as a team. Um, went well. Uh, we kind of knew going in that we have four um, pretty strong runners that we think can, can uh, finish up near the front of most races that we're in. Um, knowing that we needed to to, to kind of shore up the fifth spot. Uh, and, and we've got a number of capable women that can fill in that spot. Um, we're dealing with a little bit of injury issues, illnesses, um, you know, all the things that kind of go on during the season. But, um, but they're looking good. Yeah, and what, what about Nicole? She's, we've spoken with, spoke with her earlier in the season. Seems like a, a good runner and a, a, seems like it could be a good leader on and off of the off the course for you and very accomplished as well national honors conference honors but just what about her as a runner and her development just through her time at tech yeah i mean nicole is is outstanding she um continues to to make progress from from season to season and year to year um you know, she she is a great front runner for us, uh, having been, I think, 12th at the NCAA Cross Country Nationals last uh, last March, which sounds really weird to say because nationals are never in March, but they were during the COVID year. Um, you know, but but I think Nicole also kind of needs to get some of the races under a belt under a belt before she's really kind of race ready. Um, last week at Minnesota was a good step in that direction for her. kind of saw. Uh, some national level runners um, in that field, uh, women that she had, you know, raced at the NCAA nationals, uh, both in cross country and track, some that she had beaten before, others that had beaten her. So it was good for Nicole to kind of get a taste of where she's at on that level. Um, I think that was an important thing for her to, to get out of Minnesota. Um, but she is a great leader um, on and off the course. Um, we've got some outstanding uh, upperclassmen along with Nicole, like Liz Galarza, uh, Clara Moritz, um, you know, that are very experienced, have been in the program now for four, um, you know, four to five years, actually. And, and so they do a great job leading the women. Uh, you mentioned it also, this, this, I should have spoke about it earlier. The season last year, the 2020 campaign was very different with the pandemic. A lot of calendars were altered. Uh, how have you handled the calendar this year? It seems like it's more of a traditional schedule. And you, unlike many other sports, you have athletes that run two seasons. Not only do you have cross country, but also the track season in yeah. various, various distances. So you have to 
usually you're balancing two count two semester years, but with the pandemic, I'm sure that was even more hectic. How are you, how's the team right now? Uh, just hand, yeah. making it through that and now into this year. Yeah, I think um, there are actually three season um, yeah, sure. athletes because indoor, indoor, too, yeah. indoor. Field is broken up between indoor and outdoor. So two separate seasons. You're right. Yeah. yeah so our kids are the only uh, student athletes. They're in season, you know, from the time they arrive at school in August <clears throat> and they're in season beyond when school ends in May and, you know, competing from the first week of September uh, although all the way past, you know, when the, the school year ends in May, uh, some will compete to the to late May and even into early, early June. So um, you know, last year was a very different year, obviously. Uh, and like you said, dealing with having a re I probably had three or four different schedules, um, you know, before we finally got to the fourth one that we actually competed and just kind of making arrangements. And then this meets get canceled, that meet gets canceled. Um in last year, ending with the conference championship, not having an NCAA regional in November or having an NCAA national in November. So, you know, you finish in October, end of October, and then you start switching gears to track. And then during the indoor season, trying to also prepare the women for a national cross country meet. Um, the middle of March, uh, the same weekend as the NCAA championship. So that was that was, you know, challenging um, and where you're doing cross country type workouts, uh, blending them with some track workouts. Nicole even qualified for the indoor nationals, raced in Arkansas on a Friday. Uh, then we drove over to meet the team in Stillwater, Oklahoma on Saturday and then competing at the national championship in cross country on Monday. Um, then she had an outdoor track meet the following uh the following saturday so she literally ran indoor cross country outdoor uh within one week um i hope that will never happen again but but the team is doing well um you know a lot of the team is vaccinated uh we still have to you know some of the student athletes are still having to go through covid testing weekly you're still trying to um keep reminding everybody that we're still we're not out of COVID yet and you know trying to trying to make sure we're doing things that we can do to be safe um and and I don't know if it's um you know last year with COVID everyone's kind of keeping their distance and you know wearing masks and you know emphasis on washing your hands um uh, we did really well with COVID through the season not having it um, and not a whole lot of illness either. And this year, um, we seem to be beset just in the last, I don't know, three to four weeks with um, sinus, you know, congestion, colds, uh, pneumonia. Um, so far, um, not much COVID, um, but, uh, but still a, a number of kids missing time you know, missing anywhere from two to three days to a week to two with illnesses. So, you know, it's it, that normally happens in season. So, um, you know, we're used to dealing with all that. But the whole the whole emphasis is kind of getting ready for the middle to end of October and then into November. Well, in addition to the team that's been a positive for you on the women's side has been Sarah Copeland. She was named ACC Freshman of the Week earlier this season. Uh, what about her? And also, she's from South Africa. You mentioned recruit. I think you mentioned recruiting. Maybe it was off camera. But what's that process like for you? You have su such tremendous runners in the United States, but you you've had an international roster for for a long time. Uh, what about Sarah? Her development and just going all over the world, literally, to find runners. Yeah, Sarah, um, you know, we got to a point last year, I think it was probably uh, late April into May, um, where we had signed a pretty good income in class on top of uh, the year before of a very good income in class, um, kind of got to that point, we were done with recruiting. Uh, but I had made a comment to uh, one of our assistant coaches, Becky Megacy, who works with the cross country team with me that, you know, boy, I really wish we could find whether it was an international kid or a transfer that could come in and have an impact right away. Because most of the freshmen, they're very talented. 
Um, but it takes a little while for them to develop to where they can contribute, particularly over 6,000 meters cross country, because that's not an event that they run in high school. They run 5,000. So most of the. Well, most of the freshmen take a little bit of time to develop. So at that point, I was saying, boy, if we could just get one kid that could come in and have an impact right away. And I think it was within that week that um, I got an email from Sarah Copeland from South Africa. And so followed up on that. She's very talented. Um, great addition to the team. Um, she brings a lot to the team. Just she's a great kid. Um, very talented, but she also doesn't have a lot of experience in cross country. And so that's something that we talked with her about after Minnesota last weekend, where, you know, just trying to learn for her, she's never been in, uh, she's a very limited experience in South Africa with cross country in, in very small races. And now you're into a collegiate, an NCAA, you know, collegiate meet with, 20 plus teams, you know, 250 athletes, um, all at a very high level. And so just for her trying to figure out where she should be in that race. And I think both at Kennesaw State, the first meet, and then last week at Minnesota, maybe a little too aggressive early um, and kind of pace for it a little bit, at, you know, the last mile of the race where you want to be moving forward, passing people. And she's, you know, falling back a little bit at that point. So I think she'll get that ironed out, um, you know, with a few more races under her belt. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's she's a good good kid and a great addition to the team. Yeah, how important is teamwork and strategy when it comes to cross country? We're so used to seeing, and I myself, as before learning about the sport and getting information on it, you assume it's just go on, a, in this case, go on a field and run as fast as you can to the finish line no way because it's running you know you think the fastest yeah. runner wins well, but no, what I, about the but you mentioned with sarah and i'm sure even with your upperclassmen it, you're always learning about strategy and technique and how do you how do you help them improve on that do you have sarah and work with help have the upperclassmen work with her do yeah you go over the courses just how do you going into a meet you, how was preparation process like for you outside of running right. as hard as you can Right. Well, to some extent, you're right. It's uh, it's lining up in a field and the gun goes off and, you know, you head, head that way. But um, it, and sometimes we can tend to overthink it. Um, but but there is strategy involved, um, you know, both individually and as a team. So that's part of the challenge. Is how do you blend that individual strategy with, you know, working together as a team? Because the whole goal is to get you know, obviously the, your top five runners to, to place as high as possible. Um, and so, but each runner is different. So there's got to be a little bit of an ind individual strategy. And for, so for Sarah, um, just trying to figure out where she should be in that first mile, we've got Nicole, who's very experienced and, and very aggressive. Um, and then we've got Liz Galarza, Claire Moritz, uh, who are very experienced and have learned to kind of moderate that early part of the race. And they're coming strong on strong at the end of the race. Right now, Sarah's kind of in between Sarah, uh, in between Nicole and Liz and Claire. Um, so, you know, you work with, uh, you know, all the kids beyond just those first four too, the whole team on kind of where they should be in the race, um, how it should feel at different points of the race, uh, we work on, you know, in practice when we do hard workouts, uh, you're grouping them up kind of according to ability. So in the race, you tend to want to be around those that you are doing your workouts with. There's a certain level of, I guess, comfort, you know, when you're hurting in the middle of a race and you're next to a teammate that you do workouts with day in and day out, you know, okay, you know, I can, I can stay with, I can stay with her. I can stay with him um, because I do it every day in practice. So, so there is strategy to it. And, and then, you know, you got to look at the course and what the course is like and the one up in uh, we've run two, as we've talked about, but completely different, you know, the, the Kennesaw state course um, was a very flat course, nice grass around soccer fields uh, around a soccer field complex um, the course in, 
and, and Minnesota is on a golf course, but a very hilly, very challenging golf course. So completely different courses. Um, so, so yeah, there's a lot of different things that you're looking at um, and trying to come up with the best plan and then hoping that the student athletes go out and execute that plan. Yeah, and when you're making your, your conference schedule or when you're making your, your schedule before you get to the conference meet, are you looking at track at the courses? Are you looking at things that, and even training, do you know, okay, this, this course is hilly, so we may have to head towards Kennesaw Mountain to do some of that. Or this course is maybe a little flatter. We can go to Piedmont just as far as training or even just run around uh, downtown Atlanta. Is that yeah. part of the strategy as well? Yeah, I mean, we um, we do a lot of our work at Piedmont, um, and there are hilly areas of Piedmont as well. Um, just depends what part of the park you're in. But And we do go to Kennesaw. I think James and you talked about that when James Cragen was on the podcast earlier. But um, So we do go to Kennesaw where it is very hilly. Um, you are kind of looking a little bit at the championship meet. So where is your conference meet? Where is your regional? Where is the national? What kind of courses are those on? And then, you know, with the, with the regular season meets, you're trying to run um, courses that you think will help you prepare for those championship races. And then based off of those champion, you know, based off those courses, you know, you're structuring your training. Because if you're going to uh, Piedmont Park and doing workouts on the active oval, which is a very flat loop, and then you go to a course like Minnesota, um, you're not going to be prepared for that. Yeah. Sure. And you, well, I mentioned the men's team as well. You mentioned James and they won the Kennesaw uh, Open as well and ran in Minnesota. What about that unit and how have they been uh, progressing through the season, including James, who is a strong upperclassman runner for you? Yeah, James is emerging as one of the leaders on our team, along with Zach Jager. Uh, the two of them are a pretty good one-two punch right now. Um, you know, the Kennesaw State course, as we talked about, was a nice flat course, and, and the guys ran really well. It was also a 6K, so, it, you know, shorter than the normal 8K. Um, they got their first taste of the 8K at Minnesota on a very challenging course. Uh, we stumbled a little bit on the men's side, um, and, you know, didn't perform up to our capability that day. Um, but, you know, we just talked about how you come up with a plan and then you got to execute that plan. And normally when our teams, both both men and women, are, are running well, um, we're moving up throughout the whole race, you know. So, um, you know, kind of getting out a little bit conservatively, but not too far back and then moving up through the whole race uh, if you were to look at the results from Minnesota, uh, virtually every guy on the team was losing spots, you know, uh, throughout the race at Minnesota. So very uncharacteristic. I think maybe a little too aggressive in the first mile, um, you know, but that's why you go to those meets because, you know, obviously you want to perform really well, but, but sometimes you learn, you know, where you're missing something. And so uh, I think if they can adjust, you know, how they're getting out the first mile, um, I think will, will help a lot as we move forward. And lastly, you have a meet coming up this Saturday, October 2nd at the Alexander ASICS Invitational in Fairburn. So not too far uh, from your home base in Atlanta. What about this meet? We've talked a lot about strategy and courses and techniques. You get to put all of that to the test on a Saturday. How has the preparations been going in uh, what do you want to yeah, see from the team? We're looking forward to the meet. It's the first time that we've been to this meet. It's a, it's a huge high school invitational that has been held for a number of years, hosted by Alexander High School. Um, and this is the first year that they've added a college section to it. So uh, the men will run, I think, at 8 a.m. The women will run at 9 a.m. Um, we put this one on the schedule back to back with Minnesota. Um, which we don't really want to compete, you know, one weekend after another. And most of the people, we put it on the schedule thinking that we would take a pretty good sized group to Minnesota. And then this would be a good local meet for those that didn't travel to Minnesota. So largely um, racing this weekend will be people who didn't travel to Minnesota. Um, in that group, you know, there's kids, there's, you know, some that are trying to develop uh, one day, you know, that they'll 
be getting on those trips to a Minnesota or in a few more weeks to Penn State. Um, we've got a few upperclassmen that um, hadn't raced yet just because, you know, they're preparing for the season and then they have an illness and they miss a meet. Um, so we have a couple upperclassmen that could be, you know, contributors going forward that will open up their season um, this weekend. Um, and then we kind of talked about Sarah Copeland and her lack of experience in college uh, cross country. Um, so she she wanted to race again this weekend just to kind of get a little bit more experience. Um, so we are racing her again this weekend. Um, but it'll be a good collection of some upperclassmen kind of working them into the lineup and some younger people that are working to develop. Uh, but we're looking forward to the competition. It should be a great weekend. And this will be my last thing. I'm curious because I've been to some meets and uh, over the years as a head coach, where do you stand? Like some like to have a little golf cart and ride around and some like you just be at the start and finish. Yeah. Where, no, where, where, where do you, how do you handle that? Because I'm interested in that. So I'm sure some of the readers and or listeners and watchers would like to know because it's well, a, and, yeah. How do you handle that? Yeah. Well, in two weeks we go to Penn state and they actually do provide each school with a golf cart um, to get around. I usually let coach Megacy take the golf cart and I usually um, go, go by foot, but um, that evolves over time. When I was younger and fitter, I could run all over the course um, cross country, you know, is it's, it's uh, it's a unique competition where the gun goes off and you have 250 runners going that way. And if you're standing there for the first time, you'll notice like a hundred, you know, hundreds of spectators running off that way. And you'll think, well, where are they going? Well, the loop, you know, the course kind of loops around and they're heading off to the mile mark or whatever. Um, what we'll do, we did this last week at Minnesota. And, and again, it's this a challenging course for the runners. It's a challenging course for the coaches as well. So we kind of looked at the course map and I said, OK, Coach Megacy, you're going to be on this half of the course. Kind of you'll see him here, here and here. And then I'm going to be over on this side of the course and I'll see him here, here and here. And, um, you know, you'd like to think as a coach that you have some um, ability to influence what's going on once the race starts. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to find your kids, you're trying to yell instructions, um, but there could be a hundred people standing right next to you yelling as well. So uh, whether or not they hear it or not, but, um, but it is a good workout uh, for, for the coaches as well uh, and the spectators. And so it's, it's a unique sport in that way. Well, Alan, thank you for your time. Hopefully we can catch up later on in the season. And uh, good luck this weekend at the uh, Alexander meet. Appreciate it. Look forward to catching up. And uh, thanks. You have a good day. You too.